It is ancient, a time capsule. Its traditions and ceremonies go back hundreds of years. There are towering obelisks in the north and castles and abundant wildlife in the south and some of the most spectacular scenery on the planet. It is Ethiopia, the other Ethiopia, not the land of famine. 25 years have passed since 1984, but that image has stuck. Mention Ethiopia and there is an immediate association with starvation. That stereotype is very uh, confusing because it does not reflect the reality of Ethiopia. The history, the mythology, the mystery of, of this uh, great nation. To understand Africa, one has to start in Ethiopia. But to start in Ethiopia, you need to go back a long way, 3,000 years to the fabled land of Sheba. Many believe it was here in northern Ethiopia. The main source of water here is still called Sheba's Bath. Fast forward about a thousand years to the Aksumite Kingdom. These obelisks are burial markers and the one on the ground is the biggest piece of stone ever cut by humans. I think there's a lot of Ethiopia that uh, we don't necessarily know. You want mystery? A few years ago, farmers dug up this stone slab. It's standing where they found it. It recounts the military exploits of one of the Aksumite kings, but one of the languages is extinct, the other is rarely used, and the third, ancient Greek. There are tombs in Aksum. This one is 1,400 years old, and it's Christian. Aksum today isn't a particularly large city, but it's still important for another reason. According to the traditions of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, that chapel is the final resting place of the Ark of the Covenant. Yes, the Ark, which contained the tablets of the Ten Commandments. Ethiopians believe their Queen of Sheba and King Solomon of ancient Israel had a son called Menelik, and that he somehow brought the Ark back to Ethiopia. Many people are, of course, skeptical about the claim, but whether you believe it or not, the truth is the Ark has been central to Ethiopian Orthodox Christianity for centuries. Every single church in the country keeps a replica of the Holy Tablets, and the church is central to the lives of millions of Ethiopians. Over 60% of the country is Christian. It has shaped the Ethiopian identity. I am proud of my religion, he says. Compared to other religions, this is the best religion. That fierce pride drove them to carve out the incredible churches at Lalibela, hand-carved out of rock. One of them, the largest freestanding rock-hewn church in the world. Yeah, it's um, unbelievable. But contrast the rich spectacle of all this with the poverty. Ethiopia is still one of the poorest nations on earth. Poverty is a fact of life in Ethiopia, but this is not a nation of beggars. We've been in this town of 20,000 people for two days, and not once has anyone asked us for money. Aganyo Abraham is determined to make a living no matter how hard she has to work. Her husband died recently, and she has two children to care for. She normally carries stacks of wood, but today, there's no work. So, she's selling incense by the roadside. If she's lucky, she'll make the equivalent of a dollar. So, so what she's saying is it's important for her to help herself. I try to find my own solution, she says. Music is another source of great pride, Ethiopian music. You can hear the popular tunes on every corner. Ethiopia isn't a hot travel destination. Roger Cavadini from Vancouver thinks it should be. There's a saying in Ethiopia that when you, you, when you come to Ethiopia, your heart breaks twice. The first when you come and see the poverty, and then when you leave, because you have to leave the beauty and the people. Yes, despite the richness of the culture, very few Americans have been here. 
or know much about this country. The good news, time moves slowly in Ethiopia. It's been here for many centuries, and it will be here for many centuries to come. For World Focus, I'm Martin Seemungle in northern Ethiopia.